raised by an alcoholic mother. So everything I knew about life, uh, everything I knew about relationships, uh, sex, love, people, I learned from an alcoholic. I would just say, you know, that, can you give me a, like, you know, you got 50 cents, you got a quarter or whatever, and sometimes they'd say, what do you want it for? I said, well, part's gonna be for food and part's gonna be for a beer. And, and then suddenly they'd say, well, you know, I'm not gonna give it to you then. Police told me, he said, if you don't get off these streets, I'm, I'm gonna have you in the penitentiary by you, the time you're 20. He wasn't lying. So by the time I hit 20, I reached the penitentiary. You know, if, if I was in relationships with people, it was for manipulative games. You know, it, it was just, well, what can I get out of you? After having gone to school to be a musician, uh, being raised in a normal middle class family, I developed uh, an addiction to alcohol and uh, other drugs. I had a uh, state jail for uh, possession of cocaine. And I was unable to stay sober for over 20 years. And I got out, and it was just, I just knew there had to be a better way. I, I remember my dad dropping me off at a shelter one time, and I said, well, I'll call you. And he said, uh, no, don't call me. Don't come by the house. And drinking around my, my kids and uh, lying to my children and, and to my family. I do not think that I would be on this earth if it had not been for the Salvation Army. The uh, Salvation Army ARC saved my life. Quite often when people come to us for help with their recovery, they have exhausted every other opportunity that's theirs. If they ever had insurance, it's gone. If they had family support, usually they've managed to obliterate that. The last almost three years, two and a half to three years of my uh, drinking, I was I was a street person on the west side of Charlotte. The winter of 2004, I was in that pickup truck with a bunch of blankets and, of course, beer. They come to us hanging on by the last shred of hope. And if we are not here, I shudder to think where they would go. A lot of, as a result of all the things that uh, I was doing out there, begging for change in traffic and, and uh, uh, you know, I, I ended up actually getting hit by cars twice while I was out there. Ended up getting stabbed in the process. So when I rose my shirt up, my intestines was hanging out. And robbed and uh, pistol whipped, and I lost the sight in this eye. I, I no longer can see out of this eye. The mission of the Army is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. This is part of it. Uh, we bring them in, and uh, the first things that we do with them are make sure that they are well fed, well clothed. When you show up in the morning, you show up shaved, clean. But for many of our men, they had no father to teach them. And they lived in the most desperate of circumstances. When they first get here, we need to provide for their basic needs. And then after that, we can start working on other parts of the individual. We hold people accountable. We expect them to come in. We expect them to get up on time. That's part of behavior modification that we try to instill in them. While they're out there in their addictions or in the type of lifestyle that they are in, there's absolutely no structure whatsoever. I remember uh, being cold, wet, and dirty. I probably had the same clothes on for weeks, if not months, at that point. And uh, I just was sitting in that laundromat by myself. It was kind of a moment of clarity that I believe that God granted me that night, and I, you know, I said, I can't live like this anymore, God, please help. When an individual comes in here, they are provided with structure. They are provided with direction. They are provided with a task where they can perform the task and feel needed and, you, and, and useful uh, to themselves and to other individuals. And I met our program director over here, uh, Jack Thorpe, who, uh, really gave me a very clear insight into the reasons why I thought and behaved like I did in the recovery classes they had over. And, and we, they also had an excellent class called Relapse Prevention, which kind of showed me what to look for in my behavior uh, so that I might not repeat it again. It was several years ago at this time, my children were not in my life. You know, they, they, they were, uh, I used the word shame father, afraid for their father, scared, and the Salvation Army 
gave that back to me. Through all of that, uh, I began to start to have faith that, you know, if, if other people were staying sober, then I could too. The way we are able to do what we do is receive donations from individuals and corporations. I mean, I, on my own power, do not stay sober, but with the help of Salvation with the help of God, uh, with a lot of concerned people who have helped me during this last three years, you know, I can stay sober. I just don't do it by myself. I do it with the, through the help of God and other good folks. The items that are good, we put in our stores. The items that are not so good, we will bail and sell to rag dealers so that none of what is given to us is wasted. You know, to have my dad who, you know, had said, you know, don't call a house, don't, you know, don't come by. You know, one of the last times I was visiting there, you know, he just put his arm around me. As I was walking out to the car to leave and he said, I'm proud of you. So. Grace is a, it is a beautiful world. It's an it's, it's a area where uh, I, it is, I am covered with it because God knows I should have been dead a long time ago. There is a way out. There is a way out, man.